you know it's time. IA Football is back, and we've got you covered with everything from the biggest hits to the biggest runs, from in game highlights to post game breakdowns. We are here talking any and all high school football. From day one all the way to the dome, we've got you covered at IA Football. What's up, everybody? It is a Friday. It is a game day across the Iowa high school football slate. My name is Kay Nissen. I'm in my apartment today, not in the IA Sports Studio. I did not make the drive, but nevertheless, I got the third episode coming for you guys. We are going, let me just pull up the announcements right here. We've got an interview with Colin Kurnt, uh Pella quarterback. Uh, they're obviously off to a hot start. Going to play that after these announcements. And I'm, I'm going to go through the games of the week kind of like I did a few weeks ago. Uh, I, I'm not going to make picks, but I decided I'm going to I'm going to say who's got the edge. Who do I think kind of has an edge in this game? Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, also this week, good luck to everyone tonight. Playoff bracket predictions. That'll be the big thing on Rockfin next week. So our rankers are going to kind of go through the districts, who they think is going to finish on top. Some of the races are kind of looking like, uh, you know, we have a clear favorite. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier after this Friday to kind of do that with, with some of the big matchups going down uh, tonight. But yeah, that'll be the big thing next week is our rankers are going to go through and try and predict where they think these pods are going to look like and, uh, you know, all, all that good stuff. As always, uh, hit that bell on our page, make an account, uh, subscribe to I Sports on YouTube, 100% totally free, 100% totally free and 100% uh, supporting us and what we do. Uh, positional rankings did drop on Rockfin this week, too, but I'm sure you guys saw that. All right, so let's get into it. Welcome in, everybody. Joined today by Colin Kurt of Pella. Colin, man, I, I was digging through the stats. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't even realize last year, leading receiver for Pella. Uh, obviously, you learned a lot from from Luke Hardman. Uh, obviously, he was he was a, a good quarterback for Pella. Uh, was a transition to quarterback kind of a, a plan thing for you? Yeah. So I played quarterback my whole life growing up. Um, until freshman year, and then my sophomore year, I played D-back on varsity. And then my junior year, like you mentioned, I played receiver and D-back. Um, we knew Luke was going to be the guy, and it was just best for me to play receiver and D-back, so that's what I needed to do. And then, yeah, this year, it was always a plan to switch back to quarterback, so I was excited for it. Absolutely. Well, you talk about kind of getting reps sophomore, junior, now to not a senior year from three wins to six wins and now you guys are off to a four and start what's what's that kind of progression uh, uh been like in the, in that program because you guys have just kind of kind of steadily progressed and now here you are as, as one of a you know one of the contenders in class 4a yep so ever since we jumped up to 4a a few years back every year we just keep getting better and better and i think it's just kind of just adapting to the new to the, the class i mean it's it's a lot tougher there's better teams a lot better players and our coaches have adapted and they just do a good job every year, just preparing, knowing what we need to prepare for and just getting us better. Obviously preseason, our rankings, number 14. And now here you are a month in at number three, uh, kind of proven us wrong. I got to say, what, what's, what was the mentality like in the off season? Obviously six and four for you guys, not a bad year. You, you, you qualify for the postseason. Uh, but what, what was the off season mentality like in really trying to get to that next level? Yep. So we try not to look into the rankings too much. We know what we're capable of and we were just excited to go show it. Um, there was a lot of question marks um, going around going into this season. We lost almost our entire line. So that was a little bit of a concern. Um, we losing Luke was a um, was a it hurt our team a little bit, but a lot of people didn't know I was playing quarterback and I was confident coming in. So and we knew what we had and we're just excited that now four games in we've shown what we can do i'll say yeah you're you're a month in uh starting to settle in a lot of questions about the offensive line talk about how they've how they've progressed because that, that's a that's a huge factor in iowa high school football yep yep so yeah we this summer is kind of just finding who we could play where and they've done a great job um just every game they're getting better and it, they they yeah they've just been doing really good and i'm so proud of them and they deserve a lot more credit than they're getting 
obviously you've been you've been stellar under center 12 total touchdowns uh, all the yardage too but you've got uh, a really good top target that you've been going to a lot whether it be rushing the ball or getting the ball to him in space and, and Emmanuel Deers talk about him and his progression because he's a guy that, that's kind of come out of nowhere and, and man he if for no one that for somebody that's uh, never seen him play man he, he's electric yep he is he's a lot of fun to be around so last year we did a lot more of like quarterback runs so Emmanuel didn't get the ball a whole lot and he was only a sophomore but um this year we knew how good he was and what he was capable of so the game plan was going to be try giving the ball as much as we can and let him work his magic so yeah he's just been doing what he can do and he's going to keep doing it the rest of the season absolutely well, well a month in 4-0 uh I gotta ask you to kind of nitpick on yourself what's something that you're still trying to improve on uh maybe mentally physically whatever it may be what are you still trying to improve on and kind of hone in in your game, you know, as, as this regular season carries on? Just the little things like that come with being a quarterback, not having done it since freshman year. It was, I was a little bit rusty at the start of the season and I knew, I figured that'd be the case going into it, but just picking up on the little things, being a leader for the guys and just really trying to bring the group together to just keep winning games. I'll say, do you, do you miss playing on defense? I, I was looking. I don't see too many stats and on defense for you. I'm sure they're trying to protect you. Do, do you miss playing on that side of the ball? I do. I do. I was hoping <laughs> the coaches kind of just wanted to keep me on offense, you know, not risk any injuries or anything. And so it is a bummer, but I understand. And our defense was doing great. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, again, like I said, I, I've said it multiple times, 4-0 start. Uh, uh, but last year, it, it was second in the district. Uh, it finished second to Bonnerant Farrar. Then you had to go to their place in the postseason. How big? I mean, it, it's kind of like a whole new season this week uh, with the district starting. It, it's it's a massive uh, time across the state. How important is it for you guys to kind of maintain your focus? Because uh, I think we all know that, that winning that district and, and getting home field in the postseason is a, is a huge deal. Yep. So that's been our message all week. Like everyone gets a fresh, fresh slate, you know, um, this is how you get into playoffs. So it's really important to take that momentum we've built through the non-district games and bring it into district and just keep playing our game. And this is the most important part of the year. So we just got to really lock in and be ready. Absolutely, Colin. Well, I appreciate you joining me uh, and I wish you best of luck the rest of the way. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Class 5A. <clears throat> Valley and Waukee Northwest. Uh, first off, I think it's going to be a closer game uh, than, than people are, are giving credit for. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, this is even a game that Waukee Northwest previously won uh, last year, thirty-one to twenty-eight. Uh, Mac Heitland is leading a good offense, and he, he's got he's got guys on the outside that can help him out. Uh, I'm a big fan of his receiving core. Uh, I'm just going to be going through bound as I do this too, uh, so stick with me. There's no really script here. Uh, I like Jordan Green. I like Isaiah Oliver, Waukee Northwest. Uh, I, I like what they bring to the table. I think Valley's got a little too much firepower. I think DeGroote, Robinson, uh, McGregory, all, all the normal guys, Andrew Price. Uh, I think the that, that, that group is a little too much, but I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. I'm expecting a good game in the Wolf Den, uh, but I'm giving my edge to Valley here. Uh, Kennedy and Bettendorf. Uh, let's pull that up. Obviously, the story with Kennedy, uh, just one and four. Uh, the four losses to Dowling, PV, Linmar, and City High. No slouches there. Uh, and Bettendorf just rolling five and oh. Uh, they've got that big win over PV by one point uh, in week one. And ever since then, man, this team's been on a roll. Uh, beat Davenport West, beat Urbandale, uh, won a close game over Linmar, uh, and then took care of Dubuque Hempstead. So uh, now they get a host Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy obviously just kind of searching for that statement win here. Uh, and, and they've got the guys to do it. Uh, Vinny Gianforte, Pierce McCrary has been good. Jacob Doyle is one of the best running backs in the class. Uh, the defense has played solid. Um, but Bettendorf, man, th this team is just on a roll right now. They're number two in class 5A, uh, which is something I, I bet a lot, not, not a lot of people thought would, would occur at this point. Uh, Jackson Laver has been solid. Uh, and he's got a plateau of running backs that are, that are, contributing at a high level uh Hayden Morrison has secretly put up some really good numbers at that wide receiver spot as well uh so I'm going to give the edge to Bettendorf here uh as they host uh Cedar Rapids Kennedy and can you Centennial and Dowling Catholic that's the game I'm going to be at tonight so I'm not gonna uh uh really give an edge here uh I just uh, I'm not gonna pick a game that I'm going to and and cause all that type of stuff um but 
uh, I will say it's it's uh, it's going to be a battle. Uh, these are two teams with with really good running backs. I'm expecting the ball to be on the ground uh, more than it is in the air. Uh, Braden Jackson, obviously the name uh, for Centennial. J.J. Morgan's having a good year for, as well. Uh, and then Dowling Catholic, obviously, with Rashad uh, uh, Davis. He's been getting going. Uh, they got a plateau of backs that are just contributing um, at a high level. Uh, excited to see this one. Uh, I'm, I, again, I'm expecting a little bit more low scoring uh, defensive battle at, at Valley Stadium, uh, but I'm excited. Southeast Polk and Johnston. Let's see here. I think this is a sneaky, really good matchup this week. Obviously, Johnston coming off uh, a big win over Waukee. Southeast Polk has won two in a row since their loss uh, to Prairie. Um, they, they, they've topped Old Centennial, and they went and beat up on Sioux City East. Johnston, obviously, uh, they lost to Valley in week three, and ever since then, they've beat Ankeny, and they beat Waukee, and they get another test here. Uh, and Will Nuss has been really good as of late. Uh, excited to see what he can do tonight against a uh, really good Southeast Polk defense. Uh, Will Nuss, 700 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, he's got a running back in D'Angelo Barku, who's been really good as well. Uh, and his top target, Nathan King. Um, Tim Day as well. Uh, Tino Day, I'm sorry. Uh, contacts are still blurry. Uh, but the defense for, for Johnson is, is what the big story is. Uh, I talked to Nick Fox. Obviously, he talked about it on the shows, how suffocating that defense was against Waukee. He was really impressed with the front. Uh, they were getting pressure on Baker what seemed like all night long. Um, and, and, I mean, you can just expect uh, if they can do that again, that th this game is going to be a lot uh, more closer than you think. Colby Gibbons on that defensive end. Uh, Jacob Helgeson are, are two guys that kind of kind of lead in, in, in many ways. Uh, I'm excited to see this game. Southeast Polk, obviously, bringing Sam Zelenovich to the table, bringing that receiving core uh, is going to be a ton of fun. Holden Hansen, uh, he's, he's been really good at quarterback. Uh, I, I know he'd say it, too. He's just got to lower the, that turnover rate. And if he can, uh, Southeast Polk is, is a really hard team to beat. Uh, but I'm going to go. I'm going to give the edge to Johnson here. I think Johnson's got a lot of momentum. I think it's going to be a really good game uh, at Johnson. I think getting a home game, too, for Johnson's big. So I'm going to give the slight edge to Johnson here. Um, I, I like how the Dragons have been playing as of late. Pleasant Valley and Cedar Falls. Uh, as I pull this one up. Cedar Falls and Pleasant Valley. Here we go. Number seven versus number 11 in Class 5A. Cedar Falls, two and three. Uh, but, man, they've had some really close losses. Close loss to Linmar. Close, close loss to Liberty. And then, obviously, a loss to Ankeny Centennial. PV's just been rolling ever since uh, that week one loss to Bettendorf by one point. Uh, they picked up some big wins over Kennedy, over Liberty, over Prairie. Uh, and then last week over Dubuque Sr. Uh, and I'm just straight up, I'm giving my edge to the Pleasant Valley here. I like what this team brings. I think they have the capability to dominate up front with Joey Van Wetzinga and company. Uh, I think he's a he's a force. Uh, and just the rushing numbers prove it. That this team's rushing for over six yards per carry, uh, and that's what they like to do a lot. And if they're doing that, uh, they're going to be extremely successful. Elijah Rodney, Harrison uh, Fierce uh, are, are both contributing at a high level. Uh, both have over 450 yards in rushing. Uh, but, yeah, I mean – it's a ton of fun to watch. Uh, expect another really good running back matchup in this one, Cedar Falls, with DeVary and Clark. Uh, he's been quietly one of the better um, running backs in the entire state of Iowa. Uh, he's he's approaching 1,000 yards, actually, uh, as I look at Bound. Uh, he's been a ton of fun to follow. Uh, 13 rushing touchdowns for him. Uh, but, I, I again, I, I'm expecting Pleasant Valley. I'm going to give the edge to them in this one. Prairie and Ankeny uh, as as – the Cedar Rapids squad heads into the Metro uh, to face the Hawks. Uh, I got a chance to see Ankeny last week over Iowa City West. Looked really good. Um, uh, took care of business, 38-22. to 22. Score was really uh, a lot. Uh, that score does not replicate how that went. The, the, the Hawks were dominant in that one. Uh, and Prairie, a uh, team that's lost two in a row, looking to find their way. Lost to PV and lost to Liberty after they beat Southeast Polk. Um, I'm going to give my edge to Ankeny here. Uh, I like the, I like the ground game that they're starting to get with, with Larmy and Hankus, uh, Luke Anderson. Uh, he, he's kind of a veteran quarterback that's kind of seen it and been there. He eclipsed a thousand yards passing. Uh, and I was just really impressed with what I saw with them last year. Uh, even, even Br Andrew Brandhorst, he was making some plays on the edge. I was really impressed with him. Uh, the line was dominant uh, as well. And the defense was, was, 
really suffocating for for most of that game. Just kind of allowed some stuff at the end. But I'm going to give my edge to Ankeny here uh, to take down Prairie. Uh, so that's all I got for Class 5A. Let's move on to Class 4A. Newton and Pella. This is a sneaky one. Uh, I think Newton's going to keep this really tight. Uh, and they've got a guy that we haven't really talked about a ton that I think deserves to be talked about. Uh, and that's Caden Klein. Caden Klein has been a dude. Uh, 700 plus yards passing. He's got 600 plus yards rushing. Uh, he's kind of a do it all guy. He, he's got most of their offensive yardage. It runs through number five, the junior. Uh, and teams know that, and teams are still having uh, a tough time stopping him. Uh, he's a true, true, true dual threat guy. Uh, and speaking of, you kind of got uh, another dual threat guy on the other end, and, and, and Colin Kurt. Uh, he's been really good as well. Yeah, he tends to lean a little bit more on his passing, 850 plus yards passing, 300 plus yards rushing. Uh, but that's because he's got a guy like Emmanuel Deers to hand off to, uh, who's been super explosive and just about everything. Harrison Mullins as well has been a good target for him. Um, my edge, ooh, this is tough because I think this is going to be one of those one possession games that really comes down to the end. Um, Pella's Pella's played a lot of close games. They've won a lot of close games. Newton hasn't lost since what looks like week one. Oof. I'll give my edge to Pella, uh, but I think this is going to be really, really close uh, and really competitive down the stretch for an 11-2 matchup. North Scott and Xavier. Here we go. Uh, probably the game of the week in Class 4A. There's a ton of big ones, it feels like. Um, <clears throat> but for North Scott, man, uh, they got a guy in, in Chase Smith who's been super productive. Uh, 13 touchdowns to one interception for him. Uh, he's been solid on the ground, too. He's been contributing that way. Jared Lee, Evan Cruz have both been contributing. Uh, uh, Cash Bowie's he's kind of been that red zone guy. Five receiving touchdowns for him. Five receiving touchdowns for Kaysen, uh Lage. Um, sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Uh, but I've been impressed with North Scott, uh, Xavier, it seems like they've used a, a bunch of different quarterbacks. Uh, not quite sure what's what's going on there, but uh, you know, no matter who they throw out at quarterback, you know they're going to be extremely competitive. Uh, and Carter Hoffman is going to get the ball a ton, no matter what. Uh, the junior running back uh, approaching 500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Uh, he's got 461 and five, not 10 touchdowns. He's got five touchdowns. I thought that said nine. My fault. Um, but as far as an edge. Uh, I'm going to give it to North Scott here. Uh, they're at home. Uh, I like the way they've been playing lately. Um, ever since the, the, their one loss, um, you know, they've been rolling. They, they lost Russian to Buke 21-7, to bounced back uh, with a win over Burlington. Uh, so I'm going to go with North Scott here. Uh, I like them being at home. I think that's a big factor. And that's going to lead a lot into my next one, which is Decora uh, in Waverly Shell Rock. If you watched Wednesday's show, you know that Decora was a dog. Uh, and I don't like picking against Waverly Shell Rock because, I, like I said, I think this is one of the hottest teams in the entire state of Iowa. Uh, they've got the big wins over Bonnier at Ferrar, Clear Lake, and Western Dubuque in their last three weeks. Uh, but Decora is just a quiet 5-0 and team who, who's got some big wins themselves over Indy and West Delaware. Uh, and I'm going to stick with Decora. Uh, again, I talked about it on the show, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Uh, but I, 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 like, I like the versatility that they bring on offense. Uh, I, look, I like Lewis Books. Uh, Lewis Buxa, um, he's been extremely solid. Uh, they got it. They got a run game that's averaging five yards per carry, uh, which I like to see. Um, but yeah, going with the Cora uh, with an edge there. Ballard and North Polk, uh, another really good one. Uh, it's a shame that there's so many ranked games that this one kind of just falls to the wayside. But this is uh, a, a really really good Class Four A game going down. North Polk, one of the few remaining undefeateds. Ballard looking to snap that. Um, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to because North Polk has has just been dominant. Uh, the, 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 their quarterback, Nathan Feldman, uh, has been a, a huge surprise, uh, and, and he's a, a big, big factor with his legs. Uh, 800 yards rushing for him. They also got one of the best running backs in the class in B.J. Tate. Uh, so those two guys are a handful to stop rushing the football. It's a team that averaged seven and a half yards per carry. Uh, which is pretty crazy, and they still have that threat to throw it with Feldman. He's got 400 plus yards passing. Um, so yeah, I, I like North Polk a lot. I also I also like Ballard. Jackson Walker is one of my favorite dudes to check uh, his stat lines every week. That dude's putting up crazy numbers. Uh, and if Ballard can can uh, pace with North Polk in terms of scoring, 
Uh, this could be a really good game, uh, but I think North Polk uh, has the edge here. Gilbert and Carlisle, number eight versus unranked. Um, as I pull it up on bound, Carlisle 0-5, uh, but they've competed in every single one of these games. Uh, I mean, North Polk was a 14-point game. Winterset, two-point game. Pella, 13-point game. Uh, this is a team that competes to the end, uh, and I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. Um, I know Gilbert's 5-0. and They've got the storylines, but Gilbert's also played uh, some close games and pulled away late, and that's kind of what they like to do. They, they like to wear you down in that fourth quarter and, and kind of pile on at the end. Um, but Will Hawthorne is the story here. 1,000 yards. Uh, Carlisle is going to have a handful stopping him. Um, I'm going to give my edge to Gilbert here, uh, but I do think this is going to be a lot closer uh, than people think. <coughs> Sorry. Indianola and Boone, as I find this one. Uh, two, three, and two teams uh, kind of looking to get their feet underneath them. Boone's lost their last two uh, to Gilbert and ADM, respectfully. Indianola is coming off a loss to Ballard. Um, I, I think I'm giving an edge to Indianola here. Um, let's see as I pull up the stats. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like Indianola in this one. I think it's another one that's going to be a really close game. Uh, Asher Brurek has been solid. Jake Ponier, uh, or Pontier, uh, has been really good rushing the football for Indianola. Um, let's see for Boone. Uh, it's been Jude Bumgarner. Uh, he's been a good story. Uh, Lucas Butcher uh, has, has been good rushing the football for them as well. Um, let's see the, the, the history in this one. Uh, two teams did not play last year. Indianola is 2-0 in the series. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and give my edge to Indianola here. Uh, close game probably down the stretch, but I, I like the Indians in this one. Let's move on to Class 3A where we've got some big ones. Starting with Solon and Benton. Uh, now you see number one versus an unranked team. Uh, but what I will remind you is that Solon uh, beat Mount Vernon 7-6. to six And and Benton kept it close with Mount Vernon 15-13. to 13. Uh, So I think Benton uh, probably could be ranked at this point. I, I know they're not. Two losses to Mount Vernon and Clear Creek Um, But I like what Benton brings to the table. And I think this is going to be another one of those low scoring, just defensive battles in the trenches uh i'm gonna give my edge to solon here i like ty bell i like eddie johnson a ton uh maddox kelly super fun to watch as well uh i i haven't gotten the chance to see ben but i've been super impressed with what i've seen uh in their box scores consistently brandon hying uh uh ha has been good dylan uh la la favor uh, i think i'm saying that correctly he's got seven rushing touchdowns I'm going to give my edge to Solon here, uh, but another one that I think is low low scoring. Uh, I, I think it could be one of those games where neither team hits 20, and it's kind of like that 15-13 to 13 game uh, that Benton played against Mount Vernon. The big one here, though, Clear Lake and Algona. <clears throat> uh, the game of the week uh, in Class 3A could be one of the bigger games. Clear Lake's uh, ranking, obviously, taking a hit uh, because of their loss. Um <clears throat> to Waverly Shell Rock, but nevertheless, district title implications on the line. This is a loaded district, so I'm not going to say this is for the district title because there are other teams in this district that can come out and, and bite you. Um, but man, this this could be a, this could be a high scoring affair. This could be one of those games that's that's uh, just a shootout. Jackson McIntyre, uh, the sophomore for Clear Lake, has, has been phenomenal. 17 touchdowns to only one interception. Uh, he's been good rushing the ball as well. Titan Schmidt, one of the better running backs in the class. And then receiving, uh, you got Alex Kerr, you got Thomas Meyer. Titan Schmidt's a threat out of the backfield as well. This team's just super deep. And like I said, uh, if you if you follow me on Twitter, which I recommend you do, Clear Lake is the only team uh, to be top five in passing and rushing in their respective class. No other team can say that besides the Clear Lake Lions. They're going to look to keep it up. On the other side, though, Alex Mansky. Uh, has been phenomenal as well. 15 touchdowns to no interceptions. He's got 1,100 yards passing. Um, William Welkert, uh, they're, they're leading back. Uh, they average 5.9 yards per carry as a team. Uh, and, and Mansky really really spreads it out uh, amongst his skill guys. Evan Alley's been the leader. Uh, but you got Tate Slagle. You got, you got Tyson Vanderwell. Uh, I mean, just tons of guys making impact uh, for this team uh, on the offensive end. So I'm expecting a high-scoring game. I do think Algona wins. I'm going to give the edge to Algona. I think this is a state title contending team, and I'm expecting them 
Um, I kind I'm giving the edge to them in this one. <clears throat> Indy and Wallert. Uh, another really good game. Any other week, you could say this would be the game of the week. Uh, Wallert Catholic, one of the pleasant surprises. Um, in this one. Um, uh, but straight up, I'm I'm giving my edge to Indy. I I really like what Independence has done. Uh, EJ Miller, we talked about him a ton. Brady Kurt, we talked about him a ton as well. Um, Waller Catholics as as has been incredible. Don't get me wrong, five and zero. Um, they they've beaten Western Dubuque, which is just like a you you know a, a resume building win. Um, uh, but I think Indy's just Indy's offense is just going to be too much. They're, they're lo- one loss to Decora, uh, who is obviously a class above them. Uh, but besides that, this team's put up 35 points every single week, uh, and I'm expecting the same type of thing here. Uh, give me Indy and the Mustangs over at Waller Catholic. Carroll and Bishop Heelan, homecoming for the Tigers. Obviously, Carroll, um, my alma mater. Uh, I, I won't make a pick on this one because I'm definitely biased. Uh, but what I'm excited to see is this running back matchup uh, here in this one. Case and Thomas uh, for Heelan is going to be the guy to stop if you're a Carroll Tiger. Uh, 800 plus yards rushing for him, 14 rushing touchdowns. And if you're a crusader, uh, you're going to be looking to stop Tayden Peterson, uh, number five in black and orange, 780 yards and eight rushing touchdowns for him. Uh, both teams do have that threat to throw, uh, Carroll a little bit more. They've got 500 plus yards passing with Carter Essig, um, and with Heelan, not as much of a threat to throw. Uh, this team is, is one that likes to keep it on the ground, but they do it effectively over six yards per carry for them. Only 171 yards passing as a team uh, uh, for Heelan thus far, so really not a threat um, to throw it too much. But you know, uh, you, know you still got to respect it every single down. Uh, so Carroll and Heelan, both four and one, colliding in that district matchup should be a ton of fun. Uh, MOC and Sergeant Bluff Luton. Um, MOC obviously coming off the loss to Carroll. Sergeant Bluff Luton uh, still one of the few remaining unbeaten's. Uh, and I, let me tell you, I think MOC is going to give them a run. I know you see number 10 versus unranked. I think MOC, uh, I, I might even just give the edge to MOC here uh, in a bounce back week for them. I like Blake Albers. Uh, they got a, they got a guy on the edge and Amon Langton, who's super fun to watch. If you haven't seen his film yet, uh, he's, he's incredibly fun to watch. Uh, and, and with Sergeant Bluff Luton, it's a team that's going to keep it on the ground. Uh, they average eight yards per carry. They've got multiple guys. They've got five guys over 200 plus rushing yards so they've got a plateau of guys that they just throw out out at, out at you to keep their guys fresh uh that's that's going to be a tough thing to stop uh Bo Cotum, Xavier Ellington um Isaiah Jarevic uh, have all been really good but for for whatever reason I'm just kind of feeling that MOC is due for a bounce back week after a tough uh loss to Carroll so I think MOC is going to keep that really close uh and I'm going to give my outright edge to them Atlantic and Creston Crescent coming off a huge win over Harlan, uh, where obviously Weston Trapp put his name in the record books uh, with the best 400 and whatever rushing yards, just an insane amount. Um, and Atlantic obviously still hanging on the rankings, took down Knoxville. Um, but I think I'm going to give my outright edge to Crescent here. I, I think they're going to be clicking uh, on the offensive end. I think something clicked. This is one and four versus five and one, uh, let me say. Uh, but this is kind of my wild card. I, I think Creston's going to get it going. Um, I, I think they're going to be able to get Weston Trap the ball a lot. Uh, I'd just be afraid of Weston Trap taking it over. These are two teams with dominant rushing attacks. Atlantic, one of the better rushing teams in the entire state of Iowa, over 2,000 yards rushing as a team. Tyson O'Brien uh, is a big reason for that. Um, but yeah, just just kind of looking at this, man, this. This, these are two rushing dominant teams, and I, I could see this being really high scoring, and, and both offenses kind of just marching on each other. Um, so I'm going to get my outright outright edge to Crescent here. This one could backfire on me, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, so there you go, there you go, outright edge to Creston. Move on to Class Two A. Already at 23 minutes, guys. I, I don't want to keep you guys for too long, um, so I'll keep it moving here. Spirit Lake and ELC. Uh, uh, sh- straight up outright edge to, to Spirit Lake here. Uh, a, a test in ELC who's, who doesn't have the prettiest record, uh, but they played against solid opponents. I'm still giving my outright edge here um, to Spirit Lake. Uh, uh, the offense is just too deep. Um, nevertheless, going to be a fun one to watch. West Lion and Cherokee Wash. Uh, that's one we should talk about. I, I got a chance to see West Lion. Um, 
it's a team that's just extremely physical up front, man. They, they give you nothing. Uh, and uh, this is a district that's loaded uh, with the likes of Western Christian, CLGLR. Uh, this is a really good district. West Lion already took care of Western Christian. Now they're looking to take care of Cherokee Wash. Um, and I think they do so. I'll, I'll give my outright edge uh, to West Lion. I like Jackson Palestrad. Uh Don't get me wrong. I like him a lot. Um, I just think West Lion is so physical up front. I was super impressed with what they brought to the table. Uh, and obviously last year, West Lion dominated this matchup. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be a domination, but I do think West Lion takes care of business here. Van Meter and Sheraton, an intriguing one. Uh, unranked Sheraton uh, hosting Van Meter. Uh, I do think Van Meter, uh, I'll say I'll give my edge to Van Meter. Um, that's where I'm going to go. Uh, but I will say if Brock Oxenrider gets loose, uh, this could be a, a kind of a nightmare game for Van Meter. He's, he's got over a thousand yards rushing. He's been just extremely efficient. Uh, seems like every week I'm putting him in the player of the week category. So Van Meter's going to have to hone in and stop him. Um, Van Meter, though, two straight weeks, uh, bounce back wins, two shutout wins uh, since their loss to Humboldt. Uh, that's a team on a vengeance. Jay Haley's uh, doing a great job leading that offense, and Caleb Moore's a threat on the edge. Um, Excuse me, sorry. I'm gonna sneeze here soon, but I'm gonna give my edge. <coughs> there it is. Uh, but I'm gonna give my edge to Van Meter in that one. Kemper Catholic and Des Moines Christian, uh, two ranked teams, uh, should be uh, an intriguing one here. Nick Fox is actually gonna be at this one, uh, and these are two offenses that that you know have that versatility. Brock Bading, obviously one of the better quarterbacks in the entire class, nine hundred plus, plus yards passing. Um, on the other side, Jed Each, not as many yards passing, but still uh, a threat to throw the football. Um, these are both teams with balanced offenses that, that I like. Uh, Des Moines Christian is coming off three straight wins since their loss to Van Meter. Um, Kemper, four straight wins since their week one loss to Bishop Heelan. Um, I'm going to give my edge to Kemper Catholic here. Going on the road in Des Moines Christian, uh, I think this is going to be one of those one of those uh, close games coming down to the edge. I don't expect a blowout here, uh, but I do like I do like baiting. Um, I like Kimber Catholic's defense. Uh, they've been really solid the last few weeks, um, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the Knights. West Burlington and Central Lee. Um, I won't talk too much on that one because I did pick Central Lee as my dog. So you can go back uh, to Locks and Dogs. Uh, and I don't want to repeat myself, but I like Caden Caffey. Leads him in passing and rushing. Uh, Quincy Collins is going to be a handful to stop if you're a Central Lee Hawk, though. But if they can do that, um, I like Central Lee with a little upset here. Uh, and then Nick's dog was Mid Prairie and Meepo. And I, I actually wanted to take Mid Prairie as my dog as well, but I already had this year, so I wasn't able to. Um, Brady Weber is approaching a thousand yards passing. Hudson Arafelt uh, approaching six hundred yards rushing. Um, I, I like Mid Prairie a lot. I, I like Meepo as well. Uh, don't get me wrong. This is a team uh, that's coming off a close loss to West Burlington, uh, uh, but I, you just like how Mid Prairie kind of beat up on West Burlington and Meepo, um, you know, fell. So you know the common opponent thing kind of is, is pointing at Mid Prairie here. Uh, but Meepo uh, with Noah Schmidgall, uh, 800 plus yards rushing, one of the best backs in the entire class. He's got the uh, the, the capability to kind of be a game breaker and uh, you know really break it open. Uh, so that's the thing you're you got to be worried about if you're a Golden Hawk. But I'm still going to give my edge uh, to Mid Prairie there. Uh, I'm with Nick Fox on that one. Moving on to Class 1A, I appreciate you guys for sticking around with me on a Friday. Grundy Center in South Harden. Uh, Grundy Center is going to throw their 30, I believe it's 31 game winning streak on the line against South Harden as I'm looking for it on bound. There it is. Uh, Peyton Welch uh, of South Harden uh, up there in those positional rankings for class 1A. If you're a subscriber and check it out, you know where he's at, but he's always at the top uh, and he's going to be battling with Judd Jarofsky, another one of the elite quarterbacks in the class. Just completing his passes at an extremely high level, 61 of 71 on the air for a thousand yards. Uh, dude's uh, the definition of a, of efficient. Um, uh, with South Harden though, they, they've they've really got a balanced attack with Welch throwing the ball, uh, with Jackson Drury rushing the ball, uh, and, and with Sam Betts and receiving the ball. Um, this is a deep team, and I think this team can give a threat to Grundy Center. Um, but I'm not going to be the guy to say that South Harden has the edge. Grundy Center. They've won all those games in a row for a reason. 
They scored 40 plus points in four of their five games this year. They have not allowed double digits yet. The, the defense is just stymie and just does not allow anything. Um, I think South Harden does find their way a, a little bit in this one. Uh, don't get me wrong. South Harden scored 40 plus in their last three games. Um, but Granny Center is just a different animal. Um, but who knows? It could be it could be a special night for South Harden if, if they can get that offense going. Regina and West Branch. Um, going to give my edge to Regina here. Uh, going on the road to the, to the mini Rose Bowl uh, or the little Rose Bowl. Uh, it's n- never easy to win there. Um, going on the road. Uh, but Kyle Tracy and company. Kyle Tracy has been incredible. Savion Miller has been really good out of the backfield. Tate Wallace. Uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of youth on this team. Obviously, the junior at quarterback and then uh, leading rusher as a sophomore, leading receiver as a sophomore. This team's got an extremely bright future, um, and I, I like what Regina has done. They're coming off a closer win over Cascade, uh, but, but but this team is, has really found a way to win all five games this this year, uh, and I'm expecting no different here in Week Six. MFL Marmac hosting Dyke New Hartford. Really good one here. NFL Marmac uh, doesn't look like they got the ranking on bound. I wonder if that's just a glitch. Uh, but Dyke New Hartford, number three on bound. And our poll, this is four versus five. Uh, I do like Dyke New Hartford in this one. Uh, I've been, I should say, I've been more impressed with what Dyke New Hartford's done uh, to their opponents. MFL Marmac kind of seems like they're playing some close games. Summer to Fredericksburg, it was 28 to 15. And for Dyke New Hartford, it was 46 to 6 over Sumner Fredericksburg. Uh, and I do like looking at common opponents. I know that doesn't tell the whole story, but that's usually where I like to start. Uh, Colin Meester has been so good for Dyke New Hartford. Noah Borcharding uh, has been just as good. Um, but obviously, with the MFO Marmac, uh, Quinn Mago, you, you got to keep a handful. Uh, you got to get multiple guys tackling him. Uh, I got a chance to see him at the Dome last year. Super impressive. Uh, he had some really, really impressive runs in that one. Uh, here's a name that stood out to me. Um, but four and one versus four and one. There you go. Dyke, New Hartford, MFL, Marmac. I'm giving my edge to the Wolverines though. Uh, in that one, OABCIG and West Sioux. Uh, I'm going to give my edge to OABCIG here. Um, three and two West Sioux team. Uh, it could be a little tricky. Uh, this is a West Sioux team that hung with central line, Georgia Little Rock to the end. Coming off a close win over MVAO COU, I just think OABCIG has just got too much. Bryson Kolar, um, super impressive uh, quarterback, over a thousand yards by now. Obviously, Jackson Gene, JJ Parks. Uh, this team's got multiple ways to beat you on offense, uh, and I like the versatility they bring and the ability to spread you out. Uh, I think that's really tough to stop at a lower class level, uh, and I think they'll take advantage of that tonight. Underwood and Trainer, fourteen versus nine in this one. Four and one trainer uh, versus a two and three Underwood team, and ooh, this is tough. Uh, I'm gonna give my edge to trainer here. Um, a lower in the rankings, I know uh, they do have a better record. I-, I like Ben Casey a lot. I like Garrett Louette a lot. I think it's a really fun quarterback matchup. I just think trainer just has a little bit more um, on the edges to help him out. Uh, Jet Sorison has been really good all year. Uh, this is a team that's coming off kind of a beating of AHSTW. 28-7 was really impressed in that one. Uh, and I think they keep it going. Uh, they haven't lost since week two against Tri-Center. Since then, it's been a beating of Clarenda, Red Oak, and AHSTW, which are all solid teams. Uh, so I think Trainer uh, adds another W to the column and goes on the road and takes down Underwood. Woodward Granger and Grandview Christian. Uh, if you watch Locks and Dogs, you know Grandview Christian was my dog. Uh, I like Judah Locke. I like Talon Fusion. Like I said, a really good quarterback matchup in this one as well. Um, I don't know. The Hunter just kind of telling me Grandview Christian on the road was going to was gonna take him out. Uh, this is a team that's been in the rankings, kind of hopped in and out. Woodward Granger, another team that was in the rankings, hopped out. Now they're back in. So they're kind of right on that edge of, uh, you know, fighting for that, for fighting for the pole spot. Uh, so I, I went with Grandview Christian and the Thunder. Uh, give my edge to them in that one. Moving on to Class A, ACGC, ICAM, Manning. Uh, really, I'll be honest, n- nothing crazy in, in, in Class A this week. Uh, I think St. Anne's Garden, Newman Catholic could be fun. But ACGC, I'm giving my edge to them. Uh, I'm giving my edge to Wes Hancock in that one. They've been dominant in that series over the past. Uh, a wi- rivalry game, uh, I believe, Woodbury Central and Kingsley Pearson. Uh, I like KP. I think they've been solid, but I think Woodbury Central uh, – and Jackson for score, uh, one of the better quarterbacks in the entire class. I think he gets on the board. 
uh, and they add another win to their column. Um, <clears throat> St. Anne's Guard, Newman Catholic. Gosh, my sinuses are awful. Um, St. Anne's Guard, Newman Catholic. Let me find it on bound because this is one I do want to talk about. Mm. There it is. Newman Catholic. Uh, I picked him as a dog a few weeks ago for South Win. Um, they won to uh, 44-42. Uh, but last week over Belmont Clemmy, just uh, not very dominant. A uh, 30 to 25 win. Uh, I think that was enough to knock him out of the rankings uh, for our Class A ranker because they were in the rankings after that South win, South win win. Uh, then they kind of sneak by Belmont Clemmy and they and they dip out of the rankings. Uh, whereas St. Anne's Guard handled Belmont Clemmy 54 to 14. Like I said, the common opponent thing. Um, I do like I do like Newman Catholic here. Thomas McGuire, sophomore quarterback, has been really good. They got Isaiah Keston rushing the football. Um, I think Newman Catholic could play spoiler here, uh, and, and I am going to give them my edge in this one. Uh, St. Anne's Guard, number 10 in our polls. They're a lot higher in the other polls. Maybe our Class A rankers just really undervaluing them, uh, and maybe it bites me in the butt saying that. Uh, but I'm going to give my edge to the Knights. I think they're going to play a little spoiler on the road here uh, against the Saints. Um, so there you go. There's my kind of bold statement. That's probably my wildest pick, um, so far in this episode, Nashville Plainfield and South wind, uh, another good one here. I believe South wind's my dog this week. So I won't go too much in on that one. I like Braden Todd at under helm. Uh, I like him a lot. And then try center and St. Albert try center <clears throat> story here is, uh, uh, just kind of how I, I thought Carter Coons, um, has, has been one of the better running backs in the entire class. He's going to be somebody that our, our rankers watching for the for the Mr. I football award. A.J. Harder as well, sophomore quarterback, over 1,000 yards passing already. Um, I just think Tri-Center is going to be too much. Uh, this is a team with some really big wins. This is a team that's that's got a win over Trainer under their belt, who's obviously a ranked team in a class ahead, which is something not a lot of people can say. Um, but St. Albert, um, you do got to give him credit, hung with Woodbury Central to the very end. Uh, last week. And if they can play like that against Tri-Center, this could be a really good game, uh, a sneaky good game. Uh, but I am going to give my edge to Tri-Center here uh, and A.J. Harder. Moving on to Class 8, man. Uh, nothing too crazy here, I got to say. 8-man, <clears throat> uh, no rank versus ranked matchups. Uh, nothing really that stands out. Uh, and if you follow 8-man, if you know how this goes, um a lot of domination inside the top 10 when it comes to playing against unranked opponents. Uh, so I am going to give my edges uh, to those in, in Remsen and Audubon, uh, Iowa Valley. Glad we're grinding back BGM could be a shootout Bo, if Bo Burns gets going. I picked Montezuma as my dog. Uh, so if you watch Locks and Dogs, you saw that I picked them over Bell Plain. I think Bell Plain's a really good team. I just, I think Montezuma was my, was one of my better shots as a dog. Um, and then uh, Springville and Edgewood Colesburg. Uh, that could be a sneaky one too. Uh, Springville's a solid team. Edward Colesburg, brand new into the rankings. Uh, that could be a fun one. Uh, those two uh, last ones, 15 and 16, uh, with, with Bell Plain and Edward Colesburg, th- those could be sneaky matchups this week. Um, but besides that, I- I'm rolling with the top dogs and eight man. Um, I'm familiar how that usually goes. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, BGM, I think, could be a threat to Gladbrook Grindbeck, though, if, if Bo is able to get loose. Um, but yeah. That was 38 minutes of me yapping. I don't usually like talking for that long, but I want to put a third episode together for you guys this week. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. If you like me doing this and going through the games of the week and just giving my thoughts and, and who I think you know kind of has the edge, drop a comment, let me know, and I will make this a regular thing. Uh, but good luck to everybody tonight. I uh, appreciate you joining in, and uh, I'll see you on Monday for the rankings.